Good evening, Namaskar, and welcome to this series of conversations with Scroll, uh, Survivors Against TB, and Pi Consulting. Today, we are joining you to talk to you about COVID-19 and its connection to our health system, or to our health system, or to our health impact or impact. We are going to discuss the impact of uh, COVID-19 on TB health services, or rather, health services per se overall uh, in the health system today. Um, as the world and India are grappling with the fighting COVID-19, uh, it has had a severe and enormous impact on our health system. Uh, patients are unable to access care. The health system is overburdened. There is a lack of access to uh, medical, uh, medical advice, medical support. Um, Surgeries have been put on hold. Um, medical uh, medicines are also have been reported in terms of stockouts. People aren't able to access tests. A lot of this has to uh, is related to the overburdening and um, also the uh, impact that COVID-19 has on our health system. But more importantly, it is raising a lot of fundamental questions about the preparedness of our health system and what uh, its impact is on people who need to access it. We know that the impact of COVID-19 has a lot of impact on our health system. It has a lot of impact on our health system. Because people are not going to the hospital, the doctor is not giving the doctor, they don't want to get the doctor, health advice, जो छोटी से छोटी या बड़ी से बड़ी बीमारी के लिए या तकलीफ के लिए उनको जरूरत है, वो मिल नहीं पा रहा है। इसका हमारे आम जनता पे क्या असर पड़ रहा है? इसका health system यानी कि स्वास्थ्य प्रणाली पर क्या असर पड़ रहा है? इसी चीज के बारे में आज हम बातचीत करेंगे आपसे। मगर जिससे पहले मैं अपने आज के guests को introduce करूं, मैं आपको दो तो आप हमें लाइव क्वेश्चंस हमारे कमेंट्स पे हमारे फेसबुक पे हमारे ट्विटर पे हमें रीच आउट कर सकते हैं अपने सवालों के साथ यू कैन राइट टू अस वी विल टेक टू राइट लाइव क्वेश्चंस आवर पैनल ऑफ एक्सपर्ट्स एंड डिस्कशंस विल टेक एस मेनी क्वेश्चंस एस वी कैन नंबर टू दैट this conversation will be bilingual we will try and do it both in english and hindi and uh, uh, so that a maximum number of people can be reached out to this conversation. So without further ado, actually, let me introduce two of my guests today. The first is uh, Dr. Pinto, uh, or as he's an old friend, so I call him Lance. Um, he is a respirologist uh, from Hinduja Hospital, a very well-known medical researcher, and actually someone who is best qualified to talk about the impact of the health system today, because he's one of the people managing the COVID ward at Hinduja Hospital. So welcome, welcome, Lance. Uh, so glad you could join us today. Um, thank, thank you, Chapal. Thanks for inviting me to this. So Lance, uh, doctor, hain, aur is for COVID tip bhi kam kar rahe hain. To unka kafi kam, wo hume samjha paenge ki iska kya asar ho raha hai hamari swasth pranali par. Dusri hamare saath hain Ashna Ashesh, jo ek vakil hain, uh, ek MDR TB survivor hain. Jaise aap log jante hain, TB ek bahut hi mushkil bimari hoti hai, khas kar TB. Isse lada jana bahut mushkil hota hai. और एक पब्लिक हेल्थ प्रोफेशनल हैं यानी कि ये स्वास्थ्य की इश्यू पे इश्यूज पे काम करती हैं तो ये वकील भी हैं और ये हमें कम्युनिटी के पॉइंट ऑफ़ व्यू से बट आल्सो अपने एक्सपीरियंस के पॉइंट ऑफ़ व्यू से समझाएंगी कि क्या जरूरतें हैं लोगों की जो इस वक्त हेल्थ सिस्टम में मीट नहीं हो पा रही हैं फिर से बता दूं वी आर टेकिंग लाइफ क्वेश्चन हम लाइफ सवाल ले रहे हैं आपका कोई सवाल है तो आप हमें जरूर ट्वीट कीजिए फेसबुक पे कॉमेंट कीजिए इंस्टा पे भेजिए we will try and answer all your questions. Um, so first, uh, Lance, let me start with you and ask you this very fundamental question. Uh, we are seeing a lot of impact of COVID-19 on the health system. Uh, what are the main challenges that you're seeing from the point of view of key diseases and the system per se? And how do you think uh, uh, we need to deal with this. Like, what are the critical challenges right now? 
So from a COVID perspective, uh, I think we are facing the same struggles that uh, that most large cities are facing worldwide. Uh, this is something unprecedented. This is something that we weren't prepared for. Uh, so in terms of the number of beds available for individuals, number of ventilators available for individuals who uh, have a severe version of the disease, uh, I think that's that's going to be one of our biggest challenges to make sure that everyone's needs are, are met uh, and, and that the healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed. Uh, the other challenge that, of course, we are facing is the non-COVID healthcare. Uh, unfortunately, COVID ki wajah se kya ho raha hai ki hum apne regular OPDs nahi chala pa rahe. Because two things are that one, one the patient ko jo COVID ke patients hai, unke jo lakshan hote hain unme, unke jo symptoms hote hain, wo bahut similar hote hain uh, anya bimariyon ki tar, uh, ki jaise. So to know whether a person has COVID or not at the entry point is extremely difficult, and therefore triaging becomes difficult. Uh, the second risk is, of course, we don't want that patients in hospitals may come and get sick. You know, we don't want hospitals uh, to become a congregation place. And all over the world, we know healthcare setups uh, have been a, a, a hot spot for acquiring the infection. As a result of which, most of us have kind of limited our routine work. Uh, we have uh, limited our work to mostly emergency care. Uh, and now, fortunately, we've a lot of us have switched over to telemedicine. But I think as a result of this, the non-TB bimaria, uh, TB, uh, you know, tuberculosis, uh, COPD is another area of interest for somebody like me who's a respiratory physician. Uh, I think chronic diseases uh, are, 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 I think they're finding it quite challenging to serve the needs of chronic diseases in the community uh, simply because it isn't an easy situation. Thanks, Lance. Uh, uh, Ashna, I have a question to you. Let me ask this question to you. From a patient perspective and from a community perspective, mm -hmm. right? from a population perspective, you get to hear these stories that a lot of us may not. Uh, what are the challenges that patients are facing today? What is the health system in COVID? What is the Right. So I think, Firstly, segregating at two levels is helpful because one is patients who are symptomatic but haven't been diagnosed yet. So, these new people who have been diagnosed yet, they are having this problem, especially in lockdown. Mein, ki, um, testing centers are more and more, you know, either they are closed or they are not able to reach there. If the government hospital is open, they have difficulties getting there. I mean, you and I could possibly take a car and go there, but not everybody in this country possesses a car. They rely usually on public transport. Uh, so one is in getting diagnosed, that's an issue. And jo Marie is already treatment pe hai, unhe ye dikkate aari hai, jahan tak hum sun rahe hai ki, ek to support mein dikkate aari hai, jaysay unki side effects hai, to manage karna hai. Ab doctor se jaake in person nahi mil sakte. So you know, trying to get the doctor on a call, or trying to contact your dot center, or your health worker, it's becoming incredibly challenging for patients to reach out to somebody who can help them manage this. Um, in terms of access to medication again, um, there are certain cent dot centers that are running out of particular medications. Private may agar ye dawa leni padegi to again only a particular segment of population in this country can afford to do that. Sab log private may dawa nahi khareed sakte. Uh, so access to medication is another issue. Um, for the economically marginalized, uh, ocean ki bahut abhi problem ho rahi hai because agar if they have lost their jobs in the lockdown, agar inka rozgar chhin gaya hai. So, ye khana kaise khayenge aur jaise aap kisi bhi bimari ko le lijiye to dawa to sath mein chalni hai par portion bhi aapka sahi hona chahiye chahe wo tb ho covid ho hiv ho cancer ho koi bhi bimari ho bina portion ke aap kisi bhi bimari se nahi lad payenge to filhal to ye dikkatein aa rahi hain patient ke nazariye se main aapko ye bata sakti hu thank you aapne bahut achhi tarah hame ye samjhaya ki kaun si dikkatein aa rahi hain these are very severe problems because people don't have access to nutrition to medicines to, uh, to testing, to actual medical advice and support. Uh, we've already started getting a lot of live questions. I'm going to just jump to them because uh, uh, these are very specific. specific uh, Lance, these are for you. Will a surgery cost more after COVID? And uh, this is, you know, there are so many, there's so much misinformation around COVID. It's not a pandemic as the WHO said, it's an infodemic also because uh, Somebody has also asked us, Nahi, which is a thing that a lot of people are saying, um, that would 80 mg aspirin act as a preventative even if one doesn't have COVID? These two small questions I want to quickly get you to address if I can. Ek jeevan se, ek navi, nahi se. 
So uh, to answer the question about whether a surgery will cost more after COVID, uh, I think there will be an additional burden uh, on the infrastructure in terms of the PPEs that will need to be bought, the engineering changes that will be need to be made in the system to ensure that there is no spread of the infection within the hospital. Uh, and these things unfortunately come at a cost. Uh, I do not think uh, that these costs would uh, would exponentially increase the the the, the healthcare uh, costs of having, say, a surgery, for example. Uh, but these are real, you know. I mean, uh, most surgeons prior to this would not operate with PPEs. You wouldn't think of of things that you are not thinking of, that you are thinking of right now. Simple things like most most of us would want patients to have a COVID swab, for example, before undergoing surgery, uh, and that that these things are going to cost. You know, these things are going to add a little bit of a burden uh, to healthcare costs. Uh, but but I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to be exponentially more compared to what it was before. Uh, and I think all of us are sensitized to the fact that uh, we need to act in the best way possible. We need to act uh, in the most rational way possible in terms of. Uh, uh, keeping the cost to a minimum, but yet at the same time not compromising on on care, not compromising uh, on infection control. Uh, the second question, as far as aspirin goes, um, I'm not personally aware of any study that suggests that aspirin might be protective. There are there are a lot of theories uh, floating about in terms of zinc, in terms of vitamin C, in terms of vitamin D. Some of these may pan out in the long run, but but I I don't personally think taking APMG of uh, aspirin as a as a preventive is going to protect you in any way from COVID. No, thanks, thanks, Lance. ये बहुत जरूरी है आप समझिए कि कोई आपसे कोई बात कहता है उसका इस तरह विश्वास मत कीजिए because these are medicines that must be taken under a doctor's prescription. I mean, self medicating is not an answer. जबरदस्ती सोच सोच के अपना पैसा बर्बाद करके ये बेकार की चीजें खाना just because किसी ने आपसे ये कहा है ये बहुत ये ये सही नहीं है ये आपको हार्म भी कर सकता है दूसरा सवाल जो हमारे पास है विच इज अ वेरी फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली एंड आई टू टर्न टू बोथ ऑफ यू वन बाय वन टू एड्रेस इट हाउ व्हाट आर द डिजीजेस वी नीड टू रियली फोकस ऑन व्हाट आर द डिजीजेस दैट आर गेटिंग निगलेक्टेड लैंड वॉट आर वॉट वर यू सींग अर्लियर दैट यू आर नॉट सींग नाउ द नॉर्मल केस what what are those diseases so for the for a chest physician the obvious answer you know is tuberculosis um on an average we, we tend to see a lot of patients uh, with symptoms of tb who come and see us every month uh and honestly i haven't seen too many uh, i mean maybe a couple of patients i have diagnosed over teleconsults and we've started treatment uh but it's nowhere close to the magnitude uh, that that i would diagnose uh, prior to this entire lockdown uh mm-hmm. and that's 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 a problem Uh, unfortunately you know a disease like tuberculosis or chronic diseases tend to smolder they are not some things where you would need to rush to an emergency department right away uh, which is why patients might choose to defer it to postpone it to say you know let's give it a day or two let's give it a week or two let's wait and see what happens uh, because these diseases don't tend to be critical nothing happens overnight you know uh, and that's that's obviously a big concern the other area of interest uh, that i have is a disease called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or copd which is the second leading cause of second leading cause of of uh, death in india and mm-hmm. again you know i haven't diagnosed any new copd patients in in the past couple of months and these are individuals again who present with cough a little bit of breathlessness uh, a little bit of limitation in doing their regular activities which i suspect you know are, individuals are postponing uh, the visit right now they are saying let this lockdown go go away let's wait for a month or two and then let's go and see a doctor unfortunately for a disease like tuberculosis that would convert into an, an infective individual being out there in the community and potentially spreading it which is very unfortunate for other chronic diseases of course it's still a concern but at least they are not infectious so you know they wouldn't be spreading uh, the disease in the community so that that's a real real concern right now i uh, um, i mean this is very useful because a lot of people are not actually seeking healthcare services right now because both out of fear but also they are waiting for this lockdown to end because there is so much uh, uh, I, i should say there's such a lack or gap of information ki kab healthcare seek karna hai kab nahi that patients are often at uh, at a loss because they may be getting the symptoms but they may not be wanting to get diagnosed or actually go to a hospital to get diagnosed so swap pranali mein jaane kitse bhi dar lag raha hai logon ko 
uh, I just want to ask uh, uh, Ashna this question. We have got this question, Ashna, which, and I will turn to Lance also with it. Ye sawal hai. Do we have the medical infrastructure to handle a second wave? We are already talking of a second wave. People are concerned. Um, any everywhere or in just tier two cities, uh, tier one cities. Matlab ki tier one mein to the medical facilities better hoti hain. To hamare pas kya medical infrastructure hai? Because hami jo news mein dikhaya ja raha hai, uske hisab se to ham bilkul bhi tayar nahi hain. Ah. Uh... देखिए हमारा स्वास्थ्य इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर या मेडिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लिया जाए तो कंपैरेटिवली व्हेन यू लुक एट अदर नेशंस वी आर एनीवे ऑन अ बैक फुट एंड गिवन द शेयर प्रोपोर्शन एंड द इंपैक्ट ऑफ दिस एपिडेमिक अम फॉरगेट एवरीवेयर इवन टियर 1 सिटीज आर गोइंग टू बी रियली ओवरबर्डन अ गिवन हाउ फास्ट इट इज स्प्रेडिंग एंड गिवन द इंपैक्ट दैट्स हैविंग एंड यू नो हाउ इजीली इट कैन मूव फ्रॉम वन पर्सन टू द नेक्स्ट सो we need to gear up and we actually need to invest in medical infrastructure going forward if we haven't in the past because if there's a second wave and successive wave this is possibly going to take at least a couple of years to come down globally um we actually need to gear up and invest in our medical infrastructure everywhere um, so hmm. i mean this is an important issue because actually india's medical uh, health and infrastructure has been neglected for a long time uh, and this always remains a critical issue because there are so many competing interests uh, for government that very often health gets lost on the wayside i want to ask you this question uh, from a private sector physician's point of view are we prepared to handle it even in the private sector currently uh, considering the uh, health infrastructure in the private sector lands so i mean the optimist in me says that uh, you know human beings are capable of doing a lot when their back is against the wall when they are pushed to it Uh, unfortunately most of us wait for that to happen before we really act you know mm -hmm. uh, and and exactly what what ashna just said you know had we been uh, a country that invested a lot more in healthcare maybe we would have been better prepared in this and and, and clearly i think all of us agree on the fact that we haven't paid healthcare uh, enough attention that being said uh, despite the fact that this is a pandemic which we were completely unprepared for i think that the scaling up has has been reasonably impressed impressive uh if you look at a city like mumbai the number of quarantine centers the number of uh, public places that have been taken over by the government the the number of uh, things that have been done in a really short time and a lot of which involves infrastructure a lot of which involves manpower uh i think so far we we tried our best to uh, to scale up now whether this scaling up is sustainable or not whether it's it's going to continue to the same scale Uh, i think time will tell us but but i think this is a good eye opener for all of us that we need to be prepared for far uh, more than what what we were by default i mean uh, thanks lance i mean i think you've said it so well that we've tried and we are still trying and there are stories of hope and resilience hum puri tarah koshish kar rahe hain but it's also a wake up call right across the board for everybody not just for the health system but even for our own uh, society but also for our own behaviors you know uh, that we have neglected for so long i mean you know a doctor very uh, very humorously told me once that we've been saying this to you for a hundred years haath dhona padega padega which you have not been listening to us a very senior doctor was saying to me uh, when i was talking to him and he said now that covid is come you all want to wash your hands 10 times a day <laughs> but we've been saying this to you for 50 years but you won't listen to us so uh, so i mean it's an interesting thing because when you turn to yourself also uh, blame can be a portion in many ways in many directions uh, so let's not forget that but i want to turn to you uh, lance particularly you are in a covid ward and uh, um, our salutations and uh, you know i mean we cannot thank you enough you are one of the people in the front lines it's not easy um um what is the uh, what is the learning from there what have we learned from seeing covid so closely so i think uh, again you know there's a lot of optimism from what we see in the wards most patients seem to do well you know most patients go through a phase where they do struggle initially when they just diagnosed you know the fever the little bit of a cough the breathlessness the oxygen levels being borderline uh the a lot of patients give us a scare for a couple of days but most people turn 
turn the corner. Most people get better with time uh, and and uh, and get discharged back to home, back to a normal life. So I, I think I think one of the main learning points in terms of uh, the disease itself is that there is a there is immense optimism. So the the kind of fear that that seems to pervade society right now, uh, while it serves it serves a certain role in 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 telling people not to go out and you know not to not to socialize, to be careful. And I think there's a role for that. Being cautious is great. Uh, but I think we need to do something to address the paranoia. I feel I feel a lot of people are very 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 afraid. Uh, mm. And and the, the positive part from the front lines is that most people do well. Uh, I I think I think that's that's what I learn every single day. You know, when I go to the ward, uh, I think that's the optimism. When I see people getting discharged now, uh, if you notice the statistics, I think uh, a couple of days back was the first time that the number of recovered has started has started increasing significantly right. more than the the number of new infections. Uh, and I think that's a great positive. And 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 that's what I'd like to take back when I go. You know, when I step out of the ward every day. The number of people who seem to be turning, uh, getting better than going home. I think I think that's that's very positive feedback. That's that gives me a lot of hope. I mean, that is the best thing I've heard in weeks, actually. बहुत बहुत हफ्तों से सबसे बढ़िया बात सुनी है. What you're saying, working in a COVID ward, that uh, and, the, and the, the the problem the problem is is with statistics. You know, if you just look at you know news में TV पर जहाँ पर भी देखो आप आपको सिर्फ आंकड़े दिख रहे हैं कि कितने इन्फेक्ट हो रहे हैं कितने इन्फेक्ट हो रहे हैं और वो नंबर that number seems overwhelming that number makes you paralyzed it makes you things like you know ये इतने सारे लोग बीमार हो रहे हैं but but you also have to take that in context that you know a lot of them recover a lot of them do very well uh, unfortunately some of them who we lose may have had a lot of other reasons uh, why their health is impaired as well uh, so for most of the population uh, it's good to be careful it's good to be cautious uh mm. but 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 it's not good to be paranoid i think yeah i think this is the thing that paranoia and fear are sort of leading this uh, our our discussion in this pandemic right we are more led by a uh, uh, fear and uh, uh, passion and you know uh, paranoia than we are led by facts and that is turning into a bit of a problem because uh, you know there are so many theories floating around uh ye kha lijiye ye pe lijiye ye kar lijiye um मगर ये भी ये भी तो देखिए कि इनकी कोई वैल्यू है इनकी कोई एफिकेसी है इस पर कोई एविडेंस है कोई तथ्य है जिसको आप सोच के इसको इम्प्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं हमारे पास बिफोर आई जंप टू वी गॉट अनदर फ्यू क्वेश्चन लेट मी आस्क यू वी सिंस वी टच ऑन दिस पैरानोया एंड फियर आशना पैरानोया एंड फियर क्रिएट स्टिगमा वी नो दिस फ्रॉम टी वी वी नो दिस फ्रॉम एच आई वी Uh, and we also know it from so many of the women's health issues that uh, uh, women uh, face and you have also worked on i i want to ask you this question more importantly around uh, communities because we are not seeing enough conversation about stigma you know the only uh, uh, discussion we are getting is disease se ladna hai jisko hoti hai usse nahi but we know of instances of uh, stigma both towards medical personnel which was most regrettable and uh, um, and towards uh, 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 even covid families and patients um, what would you like to comment on that from the community perspective i mean uh, from the community perspective i think a couple of things um the stigma it, it's important to understand where it comes from and it comes as you said from paranoia and fake news and you know aap tv ko hi le lijiye to tv chhune se phailta hai नहीं टीबी छूने से नहीं फैलता है हर फॉर्म का टीबी संक्रमक भी नहीं होता है नॉट एवरी फॉर्म ऑफ टीबी इज इन्फेक्शियस इफ यू लुक एट कोरोना यस इट्स हाईली इन्फेक्शियस बट एज लॉन्ग एज द पेशेंट इज आइसोलेटेड एंड क्वारंटाइन एंड एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर टेकिंग प्रोटेक्टिव मेजर्स यू आर सेफ रीजनेबली स्पीकिंग एंड आई थिंक वॉट वी फर्गेट इन दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ एक्सट्रीम स्पोर्ट्स बैटल लैंग्वेज दैट वी हैव टू फाइट द डिजीज इज वी स्टार्ट फाइटिंग द ह्यूमन बींग हमें बीमारियों से परहेज बिल्कुल करना है लेकिन हमें मरीजों से परहेज नहीं करना है और खास तौर के उन उन लोगों से तो परहेज बिल्कुल नहीं करना चाहिए हु आर ऑन द फ्रंट लाइन ट्रीटिंग देम आई मीन इफ वी कंटिन्यू टू स्टिग्मेटाइज डॉक्टर्स दिस वे व्हाट यू सीन हैपनिंग इन आंध्र और दिल्ली वे पीपल आर थ्रोइंग देम आउट ऑफ देयर हाउसेस एंड यू नो व्हेदर जनरली फेसिंग डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी बिहेवियर व्हाट इंसेंटिव डज अ डॉक्टर हैव टू गो इन रिस्क हिज लाइफ एवरीडे वो घर पे बैठ जाएंगे फिर आप और हम तो कुछ नहीं कर पाएंगे वी वी नीड देम देयर ऑन द फ्रंट लाइंस दे आर आउट देयर tirelessly working for us and as far as patients are concerned um isme to do baatein aati hain ek to aap jab bhedbhav karte hain mareez ke sath ya unke parivar ke sath to 
ये किसी भी बीमारी के इलाज को और कठिन बनाता है क्योंकि ना तो सिर्फ हमें इलाज लेना है दवाइयाँ लेनी है साइड इफेक्ट से लड़ना है अब हमें लोगों की बातें भी सुननी है उनसे हमारा इंटरेक्शन टूटता है तो हमारा सपोर्ट सिस्टम टूटता है उससे भी लड़ना है डॉक्टर से तो हम महीने में एक बार मिलते हैं लेकिन हम समाज में रहते हैं हम रिश्तेदारों के साथ घर वालों के साथ अपने पार्टनर्स के साथ फ्रेंड्स के साथ ज़्यादा वक्त बिताते हैं तो ये हमारे साथ कैसे रहे उससे बहुत फर्क पड़ता है स्पेशली फॉर वुमेन बिकॉज विथ वुमेन वॉट यू हैव इज हर जगह आपको शायद एक फीमेल हेल्थ प्रोवाइडर ना मिले तो औरतें जाने में संकोच करती हैं अगर आप टी बी आई चाइल्ड जैसी बीमारियों को ले लीजिए तो औरतों के लिए डबल स्टिग्मा होता है कि यू नो आप छोटी सी बात ले लीजिए इससे शादी कौन करेगा यू नो दैट बिकम्स द क्वेश्चन नॉट ये ठीक कैसे होगी विच यू बी फाइन हाउ विच यू गेट हर लाइफ बैक सो दैट बिकम्स एन इशू एंड दी अदर थिंग इज अ पब्लिक हेल्थ परस्पेक्टिव विच इज इफ यू स्टिग्मेटाइज वॉट वी हैव वॉट आई हैव सीन एंड माई एक्सपीरियंस इज अ पेशेंट एंड वर्किंग इन पब्लिक हेल्थ इज इट ड्राइव डाउन टेस्टिंग लोग डरेंगे बोलने में कि उन्हें कोविड है या एच आई वी है या टी बी है और वो टेस्ट नहीं कराएंगे वो दवाई नहीं लेंगे फिर यही लोग हमारे बीच रहेंगे तो इससे इन्फेक्शन आपके भेदभाव से इन्फेक्शन कम नहीं होगा इनफैक्ट बढ़ेगा बिकॉज यू विल क्रिएट एन एनवायरनमेंट वे पीपल विल बी स्केर टू आइडेंटिफाई दैम सेल्व एज पॉजिटिव और एज अ टी बी पेशेंट और एज अ कोविड पेशेंट तो बोथ फ्रॉम यू नो जस्ट अ परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एम्पथी आज वो मरीज हैं कभी ना कभी हम भी बीमार पड़े हैं हमें उस टाइम कैसा कैद चाहिए था डिड वी वॉन्ट समी सपोर्टिंग अस और डिड वी वॉन्ट समी डिस्क्रिमिनेटिंग अगेंस्ट अस एंड डिस्टेंसिंग दम सेल्स फ्रॉम अस तो सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ अवेयरनेस एंड एम्पथी इज वेरी क्रिटिकल इन डीलिंग i wish there was a course on empathy that we could give to everyone <laughs> because not just towards patients but towards people in general because i think um, this uh, this is exposing the fault lines in our own society we've got sort of two questions which are uh, interesting questions um do sawal hain ek to um ye lockdown ki kya efficacy thi in comparison to other nations um um dusra ye ki ye dhruv raga puch rahe hain दूसरा ये किसी और ने पूछा है हमसे कि से कि उन लोगों से क्या कहेंगे जो लॉकडाउन की सीरियसली नहीं लेते आ, कुछ बताइए कि घर पे रहना क्यों जरूरी है सो लैंड लेट मी टर्न टू यू फर्स्ट दीज टू क्वेश्चन सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ दी एफिकसी ऑफ द लॉकडाउन आई आई थिंक इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू कम्पेयर a city like mumbai to any other city in the world there are there are very few parallels that i think uh, can be drawn uh, i think you know when we started off i think uh, the government did sarkar jo jo best kar sakta tha wo time pe unhone kiya uh, it bought us some time it bought us some time to build up infrastructure and i think that has helped i, I think uh, we have a higher capacity than what it was before uh but at the same time you know you cannot ignore the fact that we are a city even if you look at the hot spots a lot of the hot spots have been slums uh where the population density is is higher than any place probably in the world uh, in terms of the number of people in a in a in a given tight location sharing a common washroom for example you know that that turned out to be a big challenge right at the end of the day agar aap ek hi bathroom use karne wale ho to aap bhale hi lockdown ho aap bhale hi quarantined ho to wo area becomes contaminated becomes difficult to control that kind of uh, a situation so uh, to answer the question uh, i i think we kind of did the best we could uh, under the circumstances uh, but I, i i think a complete lockdown uh, in a city like mumbai is, is is never going to be feasible given the density uh, of the population just the act of people going out to buy their groceries just the act of uh, of people living in those dense circumstances uh, will make people exposed to one another and, and 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 i think we've done the best i i really think we've done the best that we could uh to, to the second question was about what do you do to people who don't take the lockdown seriously so i mean this all boils down to empathy at the end of the day right chapal exactly what you said uh to take the lockdown seriously would mean two things right to to ensure that you might be infected you might be asymptomatic but you you are infected and you want to protect those individuals who are vulnerable so a person who's young and say 25 and you know goes out and parties uh he clearly is being extremely selfish at that point of time because he maybe he knows from statistics etc that you know the probability of him falling sick is very low the probability of him having a poor outcome is very low 
but if he goes out and you know there are elderly in the population there are people with comorbidities jinko diabetes hai jinko high blood pressure hai agar wo unke sath ja ke ghul milta hai uh so that's that's being insensitive and and i think i i hope at least that you know the the counter to insensitivity the counter to a lack of empathy is genuine education and where you kind of really tell people uh that listen this could be your father this could be your own grandfather this could be somebody else and 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 you know boils down to do unto others what what you would want them to do to you uh but but it's difficult i mean it's it's not an easy solution there's no easy solution for people who choose to defy lockdowns and go out and i think it's also important here to state that uh, uh, you know always put yourself in the shoes or your loved ones in the shoes of the person at risk uh, just because you're not at risk doesn't mean your loved ones are not at risk right i mean aap apne ko unke paon unke jooton mein dal ke dekhiye jo aapke samne hain jo jo isse zyada prabhavit hai to tabhi aap samajh payenge ki aapko kya karna hai Um, and also the fact that most of us Indians live in multi-generational families. Yeah. So you go out, 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 you Uh, in your vicinity i mean the lockdown has a, a, a rationale and that rationale is this right because we uh, a it's a new virus and b we are still trying to understand uh, in many ways who is at risk who is more at risk who is less at risk so transmission can continue unabated every time you make anything dangerous it, this is a very bombay specific question but actually it's a question that is relevant across india but actually across the world uh, about slum rehabilitation you know we are seeing the experience in dharavi dharavi ye uh, radhesham jadav ji ne pucha hai who is a very well known journalist um uh, he has asked this question we have seen the uh, the slum rehabilitation uh, urgency come into focus now matlab ki dharavi to shayad asia ka sabse bada informal settlement hai slum nahi bolna chahiye to और मगर ये भी यही इनफॉर्मल सेटलमेंट्स कराची में भी हैं यही इनफॉर्मल सेटलमेंट्स साउ पालो में भी हैं यही इनफॉर्मल सेटलमेंट्स कायरो में भी हैं और कोविड तो सब जगह जा रहा है तो व्हाट शुड बी इज दिस द टाइम टू टेक अप सम रिहैबिलिटेशन लाइक नेवर बिफोर इज दिस बेस्ड ऑन द धारावी एक्सपीरियंस सो यू वांट यू वांट मी टू टेक दैट सो सो एट द एंड ऑफ द डे i mean it's 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 humanitarian you know we've been turning a blind eye to a lot of things so far uh and the reason it's coming into focus is because suddenly we realize that you know this disease does not discriminate among different strata of society everyone is at equal risk uh mm. so it's it's suddenly brought us to this point of collective responsibility that that ideally should be inherent to our being but unfortunately it hasn't been uh and i couldn't agree more you know this is the time where we start wondering why have we not considered uh, more humane conditions for people to live in why have we not given people better access to healthcare uh, and i think it's a wonderful opportunity to address that and and to try to rehabilitate people in the best way possible uh, such that it's it's in their best interest and it's in the best interest of of a community as a whole yeah i mean i want to take this uh, uh, question to you also to ashna um, as a public health person but also as person who's concerned with law and legal rights and also development um what are we is this uh, is this the time to rethink our old models uh is this the time for the state to step in more uh more vigorously uh the that that should be more uh, equitable more accessible jisme har jane ko kuch bolne ka kuch karne ka mauka mile jisme hum and and you know looking at the fundamentals of the determinants of health ki health bimari nahi hai ya health well being ki tarah agar hum use dekhte hain to usse pehle kya hota hai jo hame public health mein padhaya jata hai wo kya hota hai to uske bare mein thoda sa agar aap bolo okay okay so agar dekha jaye abhi as in i think when the first news came that this is in dharavi now uh, the things i heard around me were uh, 
अब वहाँ हो गया है अब ये सब जगह फैलाएंगे एंड दिस इज अंस्टेंट रूटीन लाइक इवन इन मुंबई ड्यूरिंग द मानसून इन द्लड इन द डेंगी रेट्स गो अप मोस्टली पीपल पिन इट ऑन धारा वी दैट सीम्स टू बी द फेवरेट हॉटस्पॉट वेर एवरीबडी इज लाइक दे आर कॉजिंग इट बट आई डोंट थिंक an informal settlement did not just appear there overnight people didn't live there because they choose to they live there because they don't have the lack of the proper housing they do not have stable jobs or incomes they do not have access to proper health care um and we definitely need to rethink our um, informal settlement policies now in terms of how are we going up bimari ke stage pe aake agar soche ab kya kare that's like putting a bandaid on a bullet wound ab hame wahi karna padega but going forward at least what we need to see is to ensure that somebody is in good health to avoid this kind of thing you need if you look at any infectious disease actually where does it thrive poor ventilation um you know lack of access to nutrition um not a stable income which doesn't allow you access to preventive services so all of this needs to be taken care of um access to nutrition safe drinking water um at least small but at least airy well well ventilated places where they can live um access to preventive health care awareness sensitization um so all of this needs to be put in place because if we do not look at these determinants of health we are then creating ticking time bombs aage ja ke inhe bimari hogi aur aage ja ke isi health system pe burden padega so not just from a humanitarian perspective but from a strategic public health perspective it makes no sense to allow this to grow to the extent that we have now and so i think it's really critical that we step in and focus not just on access to treatment after they've been diagnosed or access to diagnosis if they have symptoms but providing investing in all the determinants of health care so that we have a population that is reasonably healthy you know i mean this is very important ye bahut zaruri baat kar rahe hain ki uh, when you talk of a lack of health infrastructure lack of health preparedness are bhai hamari uh, health pranali uh, pranali sorry uh, taiyar nahi hai hum taiyar nahi hai मगर इसका ये बहुत ज़रूरी है समझना कि इसके जो रूट्स हैं इसके जो कॉज हैं वो बहुत पीछे तक जाते हैं आप इंसान बीमारी लेके नहीं घूमता वो वो हम उनको उस कंडीशंस में पहुंचाते हैं या हम उनको उस तरह की चीज़ों से एक्सपोज करते हैं जिससे उनको इन बीमारियों का भय या इन ये बीमारियाँ होती हैं तो यू कैनॉट वॉक अवे फ्रॉम अ हेल्थ क्राइसिस सेइंग दैट यू नीड जस्ट बेटर हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर यू नीड टू वॉक अवे फ्रॉम दैट क्राइसिस सेइंग यू नीड अ मोर ह्यूमेन सिस्टम ऑफ सोसाइटी यू नीड अ सिस्टम व्हिच टेक्स केयर ऑफ द मोस्ट वॉलरेबल ऑफ द पोरेस्ट राइट एंड इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट धारावी यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट हाउ योर सिटीज आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड व्हाट दोज सिटीज गिव माइग्रेंट्स दैट इन टर्म्स ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ फूड उनको क्या खाने को मिलेगा कहाँ वो काम करेंगे उनकी काम करने की कंडीशन कैसी हैं ये सब आपको सोचना पड़ेगा क्योंकि कोविड एक तरह का हमारी सारी सोसाइटी में जो छोटे छोटे तबके हर तरह के जो हमने अपने आप को बांट के रखा हुआ है अलग अलग से कि मैं इस सोसाइटी में हूँ मैं उस सोसाइटी हूँ मेरा ये इनकम लेवल है मेरा ये फला है जिनका है अब वो सब खुल के आ गया कि आप सब उसी में हैं क्योंकि हम सब इसमें एक साथ हैं और ये क्योंकि आ, हमने इन चीज़ों पर ध्यान नहीं दिया है इन चीज़ों पर तोज्जो नहीं दी है इसलिए हम इसको इस तरह देख पा रहे हैं हमें आ, कुछ और सवाल भी आए हैं विच आई वॉन्ट टू टर्न टू यू दीज आर इन मैनी वेज यू बोथ हैव आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन बट आई पैराफ्रेज दिस क्वेश्चन इन जस्ट से टॉप थ्री थिंग्स दैट वी शुड डू टू इन्हेंस द हेल्थ सिस्टम राइट दिस This is Piyush Chan uh, Chanana who has asked us this. Uh, Lance, let me start with you. Three things that we need to do to enhance the health system. So, um, number one is always money. I think the money is always uh, the number one answer as to what we can do to improve anything. I think we need we need a lot more of our budget allocated to healthcare. Uh, I think ours is one of the lowest in the world uh, from from what I know. uh and i think unless we 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 invest a lot of money uh, in building infrastructure building better hospitals uh and and you know fixing our skewed doctor to population ratio uh i i think things are not going to improve uh the second thing is some sort of a social safety net uh, that that individuals need to have uh towards getting access to healthcare uh, no matter what happens and and i think that's that's uh, a serious concern so a lot of a lot of individuals who are in informal sectors 
I don't think uh, have access to that that safety net uh, in terms of healthcare, in terms of the backup income, etc., which which would uh, enhance their their overall health. Uh, and and the third thing is preventive health. I think preventive health uh, is is very often uh, ignored. Uh, just exactly what you said, right? People have been saying wash your hands forever, but have we really bothered to see if people have water twenty four seven to wash their hands forever? You know, and that's that's an essential integrant of uh, preventive health, which I think we need to address. Things like um, making sure that individuals don't smoke, for example, investing time and energy into tobacco cessation campaigns. Uh, I think all of that forms part of a holistic picture of health, uh, and not just hospitals, not just doctors, not just medicines. I think uh, these are really great examples of what can be implemented. Ashna, very quickly, three things that you think yeah. should be implemented in the so, uh, uh, right. So, since Lance already brought up infrastructure and allocation of the budget, um, I'd also like to bring up a couple of other things. Uh, one, as I mentioned, the determinants of health, investing in those. So, you know, providing um, allocating budget to ensure people have access to nutrition, safe uh, housing, safe water. Uh, the other thing is uh, investing in um, technology and data, because we have no centralized data repository at at present for patients. I mean, we have we have it under different programs, but there's no one central space where you can get health data and where we can assess what's working, what's not, how we need to fix this, or even in terms of convenience for the patient. Right? If a patient, for instance, has TB and HIV, they will first go to the dot center. Part of the data is there. Then they will go to the ARP center. Part of the data is there. So it's both from a logistical point of view and for patient convenience, we need to invest in technology and data when it comes to health. The second thing is, uh, of course, increasing increasing personnel is one, but we need to build up um, capacity also. So investing not just in terms of their training, but also paying them well enough. If you look at an ASHA worker, we expect them to um, perform every kind of basic primary first point contact health service. However, we pay them a pittance. Uh, how are these people going to be motivated? I mean, it, thank, hats off to them that they're still doing this and continuing to do this. But if you look at it from a human being's perspective, if somebody pays you that much to do your job, you're actually saying in a way that that is the value of your services when that is clearly not true. The service they provide is indispensable. So, and I think a lot of it, the first thing that comes up when you talk about improving the health system is a resource poor argument, you know, that our resource limitations are. We are a developing country, uh, but our resources are there. If we can make statues, make buildings, make buildings, so we can find the money to invest in this also. I'm sure. So um, a couple, those are a couple of things that we can do. Uh, the third thing is, um, I think perhaps very important, which is we look at healthcare from a disease model. We have to learn from disease. We have to learn from disease. We have to learn from disease. Yes, but we have to learn from disease. We have to learn from disease. We have to learn from disease. And that human being comes not just with that illness for you, but with their socio economic reality. Maybe they are not well off enough. Maybe they are marginalized in other ways. It could be a lesbian, it could be a transgender person, it could be a woman who comes from a lower strata. They could have a caste uh, disability, they could have a mental health disability. We do not look at the comprehensive picture, and this is because we have a disease-centered model right now. We need to make it a patient-centered model of care, which looks at the patient as the focus. Ask the patient, "Aapko kya chahiye? Aapko kya zarurat hai?" And how can we make this experience better for you? Because at the end of the day, whether it's doctors or it's public health advocates, we're all here to improve the patient experience. Agar unse hi na puchha jaye, aur hum yahan baithke government policies bana le, ya doctors guidelines bana le, ya hum advocacy uh, you know it, it's very disempowering to the person whose whose body mind and lives are most affected by this I, I think these are really great suggestions doctor to patient ratio uh, uh, person centered care thank you for bringing that up because so much of it is disease centered uh, skill building paying your health workforce better investing in technology investing in data because even today you know just uh, uh, earlier this week we were speaking to a transgender person who is HIV positive who kept telling us how they wanted to go study but they cannot get admission because their original data uh, which was saved uh, as male and now their uh, new data which is saved as trans as a trans person is not matching so they cannot 
get schemes, they cannot get permissions. I mean, there are these, these things that we forget that uh, uh, people come, disease exists in a context. It doesn't just exist in a body. And uh, this is what we need to understand. Uh, another question that both of, I want to ask both of you, uh, Lance, let me start with you. There's a lot of talk about the impact of mental health. Uh, the, मानसिक स्वास्थ्य के बारे में बहुत बात हो रही है कुछ लोग तो ये भी कह रहे हैं कि मानसिक स्वास्थ्य का कोविड खत्म होने के बाद जो असल एपिडेमिक होगा वो या तो एक तो टीबी का होगा और एक मानसिक स्वास्थ्य का वी आर गोइंग टू हैव एपिडेमिक्स ऑफ टीबी व्हिच आई थिंक इज ऑलरेडी एन एपिडेमिक एंड मेंटल हेल्थ इज आल्सो रियली एन एपिडेमिक व्हिच रिमेन्स मोस्टली अनडायग्नोज्ड सो लेट्स हाउ डू यू रिएक्ट टू दिस स्टेटमेंट व्हाट 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 डू यू थिंक No, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. It's uh, it's it's very fear-inducing uh, for people to be cooped up at home, uh, for people to live in this constant state of anxiety, wondering whether they are going to be next, what if they are next, uh, to hear about all these these news around them. Somebody in their building has turned positive. Somebody in their society has come positive. Uh, all the paranoia that's all around, uh, plus the additional lack of social interaction, which you normally would with your friends and family. so number one you're you're physically lonely at least you can still stay in touch on social networks and you know uh, other ways of staying in touch but you're physically lonely and you are very scared and 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 that's an unfortunate combination so i've started doing tele health consultations and and a significant proportion of my patients uh do complain of finding it difficult to fall asleep at night they do complain of of being anxious all the time uh and and i think that that's a genuine problem uh which needs to be addressed number one by calming them down in terms of information uh number two by by trying and making sure that they have some sort of social networks that keep that that stay alive uh without actually without necessarily uh physically meeting people uh the the other the other problems that are obviously going to come to the to the fore are uh, uh something that i hear over and over again is that is that women are potentially going to be disproportionately affected especially women in the workforce who are now uh forced to work from home uh and therefore juggle domestic duties which you know with the conventional gender roles are thrust upon them uh as a result of which uh women in the workforce are also uh, reasonably disturbed in terms of not being able to perform to the best of their performance as far as work goes and at the same time having to handle uh, so many domestic responsibilities which also leads to a lot of anxiety a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of mental health issues So yes I mean I do think there is going to be uh, there is already a surge of mental health issues in the community right now uh, and I I do think that we need to kind of uh, so I know a lot of my psychiatrist colleagues who started doing teleconsultations who are volunteering uh, to run helplines uh, but I think we need to do a lot 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 more of it Uh Ashna let me take this question to you in a slightly different way Uh, you've seen mental health uh, challenges at uh, close quarters we you've been a tb survivor a lot of the medicines induce mental health issues uh, we are seeing this uh, now across the board you know i mean uh, in in all our social networks in our social handles so many queries around mental health kitne sare log iske bare mein baat kar rahe hain shayad humne pehle itna nahi dekha koi do teen cheezein bataiye जो आपको लगता है कि बहुत जरूरी है इस वक्त मेंटल हेल्थ के हिसाब से जो हमें इस प्रॉब्लम को एड्रेस करने के लिए चाहिए अभी और आगे तक हम मानसिक स्वास्थ्य के लिए मदद लेने में काफ़ी हिचकते हैं एज अ सोसाइटी हम ये शर्म की बात मानते हैं दैट हमें मानसिक स्वास्थ्य के लिए मदद लेनी पड़ रही है या हमें मानसिक तकलीफें हो रही हैं एंड एट द वेरी स्टार्ट आई थिंक दी अवेयरनेस दैट नीड्स टू बी क्रिएटेड बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ कम्युनिटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और द गवर्नमेंट लेवल और थ्रू डॉक्टर्स इज दैट दिस इज एज इम्पॉर्टेंट योर मेंटल हाइजीन इज एज इम्पॉर्टेंट एज योर फिजिकल हाइजीन आप रोज जैसे नहाते हैं वैसे ही रोज आप अपना अपनी मानसिक तकलीफों का ख्याल नहीं रखेंगे तो you're basically head setting yourself up for a position where it can get worse or where you might have to get somebody to intervene professionally so one is that normalization that mental health care is important and that there is no shame in seeking help for it uh there needs to be enough public awareness around this there needs to be conversations around this um at dinner tables in offices in uh 
policy organizations in the parliament. Um, that's one. Second is, um, if we look at the um, mental health professionals in this country as compared to the patients, again, the doctor-patient ratio comes in. Uh, we currently don't have enough psychiatrists in this country uh, as compared to the number of patients that we have with mental health issues. And uh, what we need to start doing in the meantime, because psychiatrists are not going to be found overnight, um, is that we need to start training our frontline workers, at least in basic mental health first aid, you know, because they're the first point of contact. Um, we need to make them understand what it means to provide mental health first aid, provide them enough training, uh, provide them enough sensitization, so that they are equipped to sort of deal with this. Uh, the third thing that we need to do is integrating mental health care across, across diseases and programs. You know, it's often our approach to mental health care, like the rest of health, is curative. Once somebody is in depression, once somebody has anxiety, but why not start at a preventive level? Why not start at the level where um, you, when, when a patient is say, diagnosed with a certain disease, it's traumatic, it's life-changing, whatever the disease is. Uh, there is a certain amount of anxiety, stress, possibly depression. If the medication is causing mental health side effects, that's an add-on. So provide mental health screening, intermittent counseling throughout the treatment and, you know, after. Uh, so these are some things that we can definitely integrate uh, when we talk about mental health. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. I'm very sorry. Um, uh, I was just going to say that we need to take it from the curative to the preventative. That means that as soon as the first person comes to the hospital, what can we do to handle them? To handle them first, to avoid them, to see them. The other thing is that the next epidemic or the next problems will be prepared for us. We need to think about how we need to prepare for them. We need to think about how we need to prepare for them. Whether it's through training or other we are almost completely out of time, so I want to ask you the one last question, which is around TB, because uh, there has been a lot of media, and we have been getting queries around TB. TB ke logon ko dawa nahi mil TB ke logon ko jaanch nahi ho rahi, TB ke logon ko side effects ho rahe hain, jinki koi sunai nahi hai. People are not able to address any of these issues. Um, Lance, what is your understanding? You see the worst TB cases in the country, possibly the world. Uh, at Hinduja, and uh, very briefly, what would you say? Uh, are we seeing a TB crisis looming further, and um, what are the challenges that patients are facing? So, I mean, there are some things that I don't really understand. There is a drug called clofazolin, for example, which is uh, which forms the backbone of an MDR TB prescription, which has not been available in in put to the private sector for a reasonably long time. Um, I, I don't understand what what the hurdles are, and I and I hope it gets sorted out uh, in the near future in some way. Uh, but since this is a forum where I can raise a concern, I think that's really a matter of concern. Uh, as far as treatment of my ongoing TB cohort, my my patients have been uh, under my treatment. Fortunately, a lot of them are following up through teleconsultations, and fortunately, I have been able to address uh, most of their concerns. Um, my patients haven't pointed out, apart from the clofazamin issue, I don't, my patients haven't pointed out yet uh, that they've had problems procuring medi medications. Uh, those of them who are on injectables, of course, are struggling again. If you have to take an injection every day, uh, it becomes difficult to find a healthcare provider to give you an injection under these circumstances. Uh, and that that is a real challenge. So, you know, we've tried to connect patients to different healthcare providers who we know from our networks uh, might be able to help out. Uh, but yes, I mean, it is it is difficult uh, to have MDR TB or it's difficult to have TB right now uh, and to continue uh, to feel secure and to feel confident that your entire treatment is, is going to go as planned. Thanks. Thanks. This is very useful because I think some of these issues are something that we are listening to our network. Ashna, you have exactly one minute that our producer has told us. Uh, so Ms. Lance has like? already highlighted the problem. I'd like to talk about the solution a little bit. Uh, so we are hear that you know patients again, like I identified the access to medication, treatment, diagnosis. Uh, we have to fundamentally rethink how we have conceptualized our TV program now because a lot of it is going to be based on remote support. You know, we're not necessarily going to be able to have patients 
approach us. So diagnosis, for instance, your patient might not be able to go to a center, but if you could have, like, as one of our survivors suggested, this, if you could have a community-based system where door-to-door -door sample collection can happen and, you know, that can be pulled in and uh, you can batch it up so you co cover an area, however they want to logistically work it out. The other thing is with medication, I'm so glad you brought it up. Um, why aren't there buffer stock? And if there aren't any, are we working towards creating that? Is something we need to be considering. We need to create enough buffer stock so that if there's a crisis like this, or if there's some kind of shortage, you know, we can um, we can sort of drop, pull up our socks and sort of uh, pitch in. Uh, that is another important thing. Um, and we need to look at support because now patients have been any illness for that matter, and particularly TB, given how lengthy it is and given the side effects. Uh, there's side effect management that needs support. There's adherence that needs support. There's mental health issues that need support, and not just stress and anxiety. Some of the TB medication causes depression, psychosis. Um, all of this needs support. And if you can't do it in person, we need to think of ways. Maybe a government helpline, teleconsults, where you know you have therapy provided, you have adherence counseling provided. So remote facilities for patient support, basically, that would form the backbone of ensuring that. Corona ki ladai ke chakkar mein hum TB se ladai na bhool jayen because you know no illness is going to take a day off just because Corona has now come into the world. There are illnesses going to be. I mean, they're going to be all over, and we need to we need to prioritize accordingly, and we need to sort of distribute our resources in a prudent manner so that we're catering to every patient because every citizen in this country has a right to health, not just people with Corona. You know, of course they do, but along with them, everybody else does too. Uh, no, I think I think this is an excellent note to close on. The world is changing, and the world of health must change as well. Our health systems must adapt. Uh, it's not going to be possible to walk into hospitals as easily anymore. It's not going to be able to see patients on a regular basis anymore. Doctors are at risk. Populations are at risk. But really, no disease is taking a day off. The time is to work harder and think more innovatively. You have to plan not for the next month or two months. You need to plan a new system for the next two years. But the key COVID ki wajah se bahut si taklifein jo aayi hain, wo sirf taklifein hi nahi hain. Wo ek tarah se hamare ko sochne pe madhur karna chahte hain ki ham ek naya upay kis tarah sochein. How do we think of a new system where people are at the center? There is a person-centered approach, and we are thinking. how to make it most convenient for the patient because if we don't do that we are looking at multiplying health problems in the future and that is not good for anybody not for the country not for any of us individually not for our community because ek bimari se agar hum jud ke dusri bimariyon ke liye taiyari na karenge to hum shayad ek aur bhi badi samasya khadi kar sakte hain aur iske bare mein hamare liye sochna bahut bahut zaruri hai Thank you so much both for joining, uh, especially Lance, because I know you you have this crazy schedule uh, in the COVID world. And Ashna, I know you are uh, struggling with rain outside. So thank you so much. And uh, join thanks, us. Thanks, Ashna. Thanks, Take thanks, Lance. Bye.